What is up guys, Rekkak is here, and today we are going to be showcasing a guide for how to activate and complete the tier 4 of the blind well activity within the Dreaming City. That's right, there's a whole nother difficulty tier above tier 3, newly available after the raid was completed, and it's rewarding some pretty sweet stuff, including a piece of powerful gear that is Petra tier powerful and by that I mean up to 10 power levels above your overall power level definitely worth doing this so let's get started now for this activity you will need two different consumable items number one you will need a charge of light tier 3 because you actually need to beat tier 3 of blind well in order to lead into the option to start tier 4 so you will need that but also you're going to need an unstable charge of light now both of these are purchasable from the dreaming city vendor petra so if you don't have either of these you can go and buy them and ensure that your group can do this and speaking of group you will definitely need a group of people of highlight people in order to complete tier 4. The enemies in there are 580, which is going to mean that if you're below 530, you won't even be able to damage them. You'll do literally zero damage. They're just going to be immune. So you will need your group of preferably, you know, eight or nine people to be above 530 power level. Now, another consumable that you may want but isn't required when you do this is a tincture of Queen's Foil. That's because if you activate the tincture and your ascendant while you do this, you're going to complete the purification ritual bounty that may have been sitting in your inventory for a while. So just thought I would let you guys know about that as well. Now let's talk about how to actually do this. Again, you're going to need to complete the tier three of Blind Well, which is just killing three of the same bosses that spawn on tier two and tier one, where you kill the anthems, the glowing enemies, you get the harmony buff, and then you can take down the shield to everyone else, they're immune, but to you with harmony, you can take them down. So then just take down the shield. Once the shield is down, everyone can damage those bosses. That's a very quick summary of the mechanics of the blind well tier one to three boss fights. But once you take out those three bosses and you've completed it, you've got a chest, everything's good, you're going to see a notification on the bottom of your screen. And it's going to say, the well is voracious. At this point, you can head back to where you put in the tier three offering to start this blind well encounter. And then it will say that you are able to put in the unstable charge of light. Now, when you do, it's going to immediately trigger another boss fight. You won't have to fight through all those uh, beginning waves. You'll just immediately be thrown into a boss fight against two different bosses. Now, these two bosses will yet again have immunity shields, but the way you take down those shields is very different. So, instead of the whole anthem thing, in fact, Harmony isn't even going to come into play during this fight. What you're going to need to do is kill the skeebs right next to the bosses. That's right, they're just gonna stand there and shoot you, but then they're going to summon a bunch of those explosive scorn enemies that crawl along the ground. If you shoot them as quickly as possible when they're right beside the boss, that damage, that explosive damage, is going to inflict onto the boss and it'll lower his shield a little bit. Now you will need to kill like a few spawns of those guys before his shield is all the way down. Once it is, you know, everyone can pile on and damage the boss. So stuff like, you know, Sleeper, potentially Whisper. Um, Escalation Shotgun isn't a great idea because he slams the ground when you get close and it's pr pretty much guaranteed to kill you. Three, uh, 580 light, sorry, is quite a bit. So stuff that you can damage him from afar is fantastic. If you're too close to him as well, there's a lot of adds and the Skeebs spawn from the other side as well from the other boss. They can sneak around and kill you. So hop up to these ledges. You can kind of see us hop up to stuff like um, Well of Radiance, uh, Empowering Rift even. Anything like that is going to be fantastic for just destroying him as soon as his shields go down. Now, their shields are actually pretty likely to go back up, however. It's not too much time you have to DPS these guys. So when that happens, just quickly kill the Skeebs again. Cause that area of effect damage and take down the shield yet again. Once it's down, damage him. Now, a couple of tips here in this encounter. Because you're going to do that for one boss and do the exact same thing for the other boss. And that's it mechanics-wise. But just tips-wise. Number one... 
a lot of totems are going to spawn. Like, those guys spawn so many different totems, so they'll spawn fire totems, like, right behind you, so definitely be on top of that. Take those down before they take your entire team out. And the invincibility totems come into play quite a bit as well. Make sure you're looking out for those and you take those down as quickly as possible. There's nothing worse than using a super and just as it hits, you realize, oh my goodness, he has an invincibility totem on him that did no damage. So make sure you're taking down those totems as quickly as possible. Now, another thing that I definitely want to warn you guys about is that even though there's going to be times where it looks like his shield is completely down, it's not. Like, it looks like it's totally down, but he actually still has a little tiny bit of shield and he's still immune. So just shoot with your primary a few times to make sure he's taking damage before you switch to your heavy and use your supers and so on. Again, if you, if you do use that stuff and he turns out to be immune, it's a waste of ammunition or a super. And one more quick tip is that the bosses somewhat move around and this can be problematic because they can actually move away from where they're spawning the skeeves. So when you blow them up, it does like no damage to the bosses. Um, when this happens, you know, just switch bosses, you deal with the other one that's in the right area and then go back to the other boss. Hopefully he'll have moved a little bit. Um, definitely have people go around where he is, even if they have to kind of sacrifice him, just try to lead him away from where he is because you do need those bosses standing right over where they spawn those explosive scorn. And that's really all there is to it. Enjoy your loot. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.